Yo, on this week's episode, we talked to Confluence Brewing right here in the DSM. Their uh, tap room's over on the south side. If you haven't been over there, you definitely got to check them out. They're probably one of the most creative breweries in the city. On top of that, they, they are true homies, for sure. Let's drink! Okay, let's get this out of the way early. We know nothing about hops, types of wheat, barley, etc. We're not chemistry majors, and we definitely don't have time to start a brewery. We're just some regular-ass people that love craft beer. And we're ready to drink our way through it. We're exploring the world of craft beer one story at a time, getting to know the brews and the people behind them. We'll try to stay sober for you, mostly because our moms listen to this. This is Hop To It with E. White and Elise B. Let's get it, what up? Uh, we out here, it's Hop To It. You already know. Here with Confluence. Confluence. What up, fam? How you guys Hello. doing? Eric and John. How's it going, boys? Good? Not too yeah, bad. Doing great. Yeah. Dude, it's awesome to have you guys here. Like we were talking earlier, you know, you're not uh, too unfamiliar to the grounds here at iHeart, you know what I mean? Through the the crew, you know, obviously with Keith and Andy over at KXNO and oh, yeah. all them. So it's good to have you guys back in here for sure. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, man, absolutely. So obviously, um, if anybody's from Des Moines, uh, they probably have heard of you guys. And pro- if they're into craft beer, like you guys are generally, when you think of like best breweries in Des Moines. Yeah, a major You think one. Exile, Peace Tree. Confluence, like right off the bat, those are the three that come to mind, right? Yeah, thank so, you. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you guys been killing it. Um, but like, I think the fun part is, is that you know these people don't really necessarily know the backstory. So, what all started Confluence, and like, what inspired you guys to get involved with it? Uh, well, basically, uh, I was a home brewer for about seventeen years, and had this passion since about the time I graduated college in '95. That's when I started home brewing, and I wanted to open a brewery. I mean, that was. I would go to these brew pubs and see the tanks and all the, the neat stuff they had and just loved it. So I uh, got into home brewing. That was the th- best thing I could do besides opening a brewery. So yep. just uh, tried to hone my skill there. What was that like? In, uh, so you were in college when you were doing that too? Like uh, or, I tried it in college. We yeah. tried it in high school. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, you did it like any any time you could do it, seriously. Uh, yeah. I mean, we didn't know what we were doing in high school, but uh, my buddy Sean McLean and I, tried making beer you know we knew we needed malt and some yeast and we had no idea what hops were so that was like 1991 got it uh first batch was made when the gulf war started like the same day (laughs) (laughs) oh man (laughs) we were in the basement of my uh one of our friend's house she convinced her mom that we could do a science experiment in their basement kitchen so i mean it, it, you know it is chemistry it you know I'm for sure i guess it does yeah. count yeah. for sure <laughs> it's like the most it's like the best like baking soda volcano ever like That's seriously right. yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny you mentioned that i had a we would we packed this up in two liter bottles and I had, we had a fridge in our basement that was turned off and I thought that's a good place, you know, temperature controlled, it's just not gonna do anything. And my dad was taking a shower one day and it blew the door open. On the, uh, so like this, this two liter bottle was just shredded and he was like, so what are you doing down there? <laughs> Nothing, it's like things like Breaking Bad or yeah. something, right? Yeah, just right. Co- cooking up down there. He didn't that's get too- upset, he and my grandma laughed. They were like, yeah. Yeah, at least they were chill about it for yeah. sure. Yeah. My mom would have lost her shit for right. sure. Yeah, man. Not making beer down here. No. Yeah. <laughs> Anything except that. Um, so then, what did the process of actually getting the full brewery look like? That was kind of intense. Um, you know, once it was kind of decided, it was like finish, like get a business plan. Um, luckily, the Brewers Association had sort of a template that we borrowed and put in all of our information, lots of spreadsheets, you know, how is it going to work monetarily? and those types of things and um and then we involved investors and you know we had to have a space so there was a lease and then a bank loan and so a lot of pieces like that were i mean it it was intense very intense and i quit my my day job i was a construction project manager for graham construction and they were great about making the transition we kind of worked on it for a, a period of time mm-hmm. where how I would phase out and somebody else would phase in and so the most yeah. I've ever given someone is like a couple maybe a month or like two weeks head start notice on on leaving a job John how, how long uh, uh, did, did you give or uh, what was your notice sort Graham? of you know wink wink it was a year <laughs> <laughs> you're just like hey just to let you know this is happening yeah, yeah. well you know it, it comes a time where they realize like hey John May, may, may want to do other things and uh, let's just talk about it and so you know we there was a lot of trust there between my former boss and me and he's he trusted me enough to continue working there and I you know I knew he was gonna take care of me so that was great it, it really allowed me to do a lot of things you know 
weekends, nights, evenings, uh, whatever, uh, getting my plan ready and, and launching. Does he come over? Like, does he come yeah. to the brewery oh, yeah. a lot? Yeah, he, Good. he is the greatest guy. He is. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, man. I love that for yeah. sure. What was the process of finding a location? Because I think, like, it's, you know, choosing the south side of Des Moines, you know, is kind of like, um, you know, it's very cool because it's very much like a neighborhood type vibe. And then, of course, you have all the, um, you know, the bikers, the bike paths and everything right by Gray's Lake. What was the process of finding that? Well, if we back up a little bit, so, you know, I wanted to do this brewery thing, but didn't think I could. And then, you know, I met Ken Broadhead. He's a buddy of mine. He moved here from Wichita, Kansas, and we met in 2004. And I, you know, we're, we'd go out and have beers, and I'd tell him about this idea of opening a brewery, and he's like, "You're crazy, man." And uh, so, you know, we talked about it like a couple times a month for years, and looked at a lot of spaces together. Um, we probably looked at 20 spaces in Des Moines, and we wanted to be as close to downtown as possible because, you know, confluence is about the rivers coming together, but it's also about the people and ideas and things like that, and so. Um, definitely wanted a Des Moines address, close to downtown, close to the confluence of the rivers. And so a um, lot of space out there. A lot of it was, you know, too expensive or not big enough or whatever, or just was going to be complicated. And then we found this nice warehouse south of Gray's Lake, and that was, like, perfect. And it was double the amount of square footage and about half the price. So it was, like, you know, again, perfect. Can't uh, go wrong. Up, no. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> backed up to the bike trail and just had a lot of potential. So. That's awesome. Um, I love what you just said about Confluence being about the rivers coming together. Where did you get that inspiration? Well, I got to say that was Ken's idea. We were trying to figure out what, what we're, we're going to call this name or name this brewery. And uh, we were having a beer at like the first Oktoberfest. I think it was 2005 down at the Hessen House. And he's like, what about Confluence? And it just kind of <laughs> stuck. And I will tell you the same story I tell everybody. Everybody that we told that to hated the name. Really? <laughs> like, oh, man. No, don't, don't name it that. And we go back and talk about it and be like, you know, let's just stick with it. Just keep going. And I'm so glad we did. Yeah, what was the hesitation with people, do you think? I, I think it was just a new word. Yeah. You know, they yeah. didn't know it was like clunky or something. And We still get a so, ton of people saying confluence all yeah. the time. Yeah. <laughs> Even my, my father-in-law yep. will do that. And, <laughs> really? You know, it's, it's tough to correct people, it but, you know, because you're like, yeah, but it's it's confluence. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Interesting. Man. No, I, I think that's so cool. I, I think it's. It's just great because you're, you know, keeping it as local as possible, even with the name, you know, and that's that's the big thing, you know. And I think it's even better with some of the names of your beers too. It's just like, what what's the process of that like, you know, just going through <laughs> different names? Like, do you guys have sessions? Do you just kind of go with whatever? Yeah. Well, it's, early on, it was, you know, we had like we have to launch with uh, let's say three year round beers, and we have Des Moines IPA, which used to be Hophead Extreme as when I was a home brewer. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you change the name? Let's, I think, I mean, well, Des IPA, you know, it's iconic. Of course, sure, you know, it's sure. an easy one to order. But still, Hophead Extreme, bro. There was yes. nobody using a Hophead something or other, so we didn't want to use that. Plus, it's that's like any time you call something extreme, there's somebody calling you out on it all the time. You yeah. know, like, that's not extreme. Yeah. You know, especially yeah. with hops. You know? Yeah, right. How much percent is this? <laughs> what? <laughs> Six? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty balanced beer. I wouldn't call Des Moines IPA extreme. It's just no. solid. When I, I did, in 2000, <laughs> Six, it was it was extreme for that day, but yeah. <laughs> uh, Capital Gold and Farmer John's all you know were designed ahead of time. And then as we get into it, you know we brew this Scottish ale, and we're behind you know Gray's Lake and Ken and Melissa. Melissa's with Eight One Eight; she's our graphic designer. Oh they yeah, came up with uh, you know Gray's Lake Nessie. It's like oh perfect, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we're on Thomas Beck, so our Black IPA was Thomas Beck Black IPA. But then you know let's just fast forward about five or six years and. Names are a little tougher to come up with, and this guy, this guy here, <laughs> Eric, does a great job. He and several others in the office um, have that creative spirit that helps drive those names forward, and and even like the the stories. If you spend the time to read each can, it's just incredible. You know what they say and what they tell you, and uh, it's well done. I think, uh, and I don't do very much of it at all very yeah. little so <laughs> well i think that's that's very cool too because you're li literally you know like you said telling the story of the beer um whereas you know you kind of got to ask questions at other breweries and stuff like that what was the inspiration behind just actually just putting everything out there and just being like hey here's the reason why we do this everything like that i mean i i can't i can't 100 speak for john but i know one of the things that really when i first came to confluence um 
Uh, and how long you've been there? Um, I started. It's going on It'll be six years. Six years okay. right now. Yeah, yeah. We're just about probably. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, well, happy so, anniversary. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I started within the first year. Um, September of thirteen. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That, yeah. I uh, um, I actually we, we had the Grays like Nessie. I bartended uh, downtown uh, at the uh, well started at the Hassan House, moved to Shorty's, uh, then was at the Royal Mile and Red Monk for quite listen, a while. Listen, Shorty's is the <laughs> spot, man. <Seriously. laughs> I, all I drank in college was hams, so yeah. like I get like such a like reminiscent yeah. feeling every time I walk in there. You know what I mean? I love it. No, yeah. So I uh, we, we put the Grays like Nessie on at the Royal Mile, and I was just about to get married and looking to kind of get non bartender hours. I've been working for Full Court Press for almost ten years, and. Uh, um, I tried the Grays like Nessie, and the first words out of my mouth, right? we can, there's no sense. Yeah, you can get us, yeah. I said, holy shit, this, we brew good beer in Des Moines now. <laughs> <laughs> so I pretty much kicked down John's door and said, uh, hey, give me a job. And he said, what do you want to do? I said, oh, I want to be a brewer. He said, well, that's my job. You can't have that job. <laughs> so I was like, I'll take what you got. And so I was a delivery driver for a little while. So, um, so yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. But, yeah, the uh, um, one of the things that really, really struck me the first time I walked into the brewery in the tap room was, the um, you walk into the that front door before the back you know the patio is such a big you know right not right off the trail it's you go right in the tap room but the brewery's right there you walk through the brewery there's not a there's a partition but it doesn't go all the way to the ceiling it, transparency is everything and I remember walking in thinking this is the cleanest brewery I've ever been in um, and you know John has never been one to hide anything that we do. And I think transparency is very important to him personally and I think to Confluence in general. We love that people can sit there and watch us work and see what we do. So, um, you know, putting it, putting the things like that on the label um, is just awesome to us. Like when we screwed up uh, and accidentally one of our guys left a valve open uh, when he was transferring uh, our, our chi- one of our chili pepper beers, our blue corn lager con chilies, and he chunked a bunch of it into our uh, Capital Gold. And so we tasted it. We're like, oh, this tastes like chili peppers. We can't sell this. And we, but we, we were about ready to just open the tank and dump the whole thing down. And we all sat around and we're like, this is really good. But we were like, well, we can't have two like chili lagers. How lame is that? So one of our guys was like, let's put some lime and sea salt in it. We're like, okay, cool. And if you get it, it's called Fool's Gold. And if you if you look at the side of the label, you can still find it a few places. It says right on there, whoops, we screwed up. Enjoy our mistake. You know, it's got the whole story. That's great. Yeah. I love that. Um, what is like the favorite beer? Des Moines IPA. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. It's, it's the favorite beer of the masses. It's about fifty percent of our sales, and it's something we brew every week. So mm-hmm. it's it's awesome that um, that kind of rose to the top and became so popular for us. It, it's really one of those things that keeps the lights on. You know, it mm-hmm. allows us to do all the other fun things we do, and mm-hmm. we still like to brew Des Moines. It's not like a burden or anything, but sure it is in the yeah. weekly schedule. We just know it will be. <laughs> yeah, for sure. sure. And is that your favorite beer too? You know, that's a good question. It's um, like f- picking your favorite kid or something. It like is that. really, yeah. you know, it's hard to say. <laughs> There's so many beers you know that I like and obviously because we brew so many. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. There's a lot of inspiration. How many of you guys got on tap right now? Uh, we have 36 <laughs> taps and there's probably 28 of those are our beers right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Very cool. Maybe 29. Are you, are you a, um, do you like sometimes throw on like some other beers from other breweries or you just kind of keep it like, or do you go with like root we, beer, kombucha, stuff like past. that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have some root beer and kombucha and a few ciders on tap and uh, we don't do any of those. So those are from other people. But yeah, occasionally, I mean, we've had chance to, to put things on, but. We have enough beer to, to fill them up. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Sometimes we have people waiting, and we we had like 22 taps, you know, not too long ago, and we expanded to 36, and we've still we sometimes still have, enough, have yeah. trouble. It's a great room. problem to have. It yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this year, uh, somebody we decided to set the goal of doing at least one beer release every week. Oh. And it's probably going to end up being mid 60s of a total of beers we're going to do this year between different barrel age projects and stuff. So. Um, it's it's not hard to find enough of our beer to fill up the taps. So I was gonna say, that's awesome. you, uh, it's kind of like with um, you know with music, like any previews you can tell us or anything like that. You know, any uh, ideas coming yeah. up? Yeah, we've got a few things. Uh, I think tomorrow we're gonna rack a barrel aged version of our oatmeal cookie stout from last year's anniversary. <laughs> um, we we aged that about four different ways. We've got two of a, two barrels filled with uh, I think peanut butter and something else. We did some rum raisin. Um, there's a couple barrels that were 
like maple syrup and either cinnamon or something else. And Your face so. when he said peanut butter. Like. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna I'm just gonna move in until that um, is in the yeah when so, when that comes in the tap room I'll be there. Nice. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's crazy. No, that's fun though for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, Super fun. he's always getting real experimental, everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, we got a couple beers here right now. One of my favorites here, actually, the Oktoberfest. Oh, yeah. Dude, yes. I, I, that was perfect. We were out there a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah. I'm just chilling. And, um, yeah, it's great because it just comes in a giant stein yeah. and you're ready to go. Just yeah. killing it for sure. <laughs> um, and, of course, with Oktoberfest coming up, too, I'm sure you guys are staying busy. For, oh, yeah, you know. definitely. Yeah. Um, every year, you know, Oktoberfest, we start brewing it in July so that it'll be ready. You know, the first batch will be ready at the end of August. And it's it's a thing you know we fill a lot of tanks and we lager it for so long it just kind of ties up the the space but um then we start processing it and it's just like the weather you know like last night i had one i was watching tv and it was just like perfect weather for mm -hmm. october fest yeah man i was gonna say a little monday night football yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly man, anytime you sure. can have the windows open you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah for sure thousand percent oh man and then yeah. of course you guys are really big with collabs too which yeah. i you, you have um i was gonna say i've had the half and half it's great with the ones with bright side. Bright yeah. side's one of our favorites too. Yeah, yeah we're the new ones. Great. Five one five yeah. too. Five one five as well. Yeah. yeah. What um I think just in general um that's kind of a reflection of the Des Moines Brew community. It's just like you guys are all really there's a lot of camaraderie there. It's not a lot of animosity. Is that something that you want to keep on expanding and showing people all throughout like the Midwest? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think we the the tone has been set long before we open a brewery. You know, that breweries get along, craft breweries get along, and they help each other and. You're trying to, to raise that you know bar make everybody better so um, we've taken that and we embrace it very wholeheartedly I'd say yeah, yeah. I think collaboration is the new competition <clears throat> so and you know we, we we play well with others because I mean right now we also distribute for 10 other uh, breweries and cideries uh, all but two of them are in the state so we very cool. we also we do our own distribution which not a lot cool. of people do and we distribute for others too so it's all about it's all about you know, rising tide raises all ships, and I I, I love that part of this industry. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's great. Um, so you have a collab here with uh, Brightside and Five One Five. What are the stories behind those collabs? The half and a half was, was always interesting. I thought it was going to be like um, a shandy almost. <clears throat> and then I tasted it. And I'm like, this is different. I'm oh, kind yeah. of into it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That one, uh, Josh and I sat down with um, Andrew and Molly and just kind of hammered it out and. We, we were thinking, I guess they came up with the idea. I think Josh and, and those guys, I was just sitting there and enjoying, <laughs> enjoying the company and, and yeah. some beer. But uh, yeah, just doing like an Arnold Palmer type of drink. You know, how do we do that? Because uh, Brightside is into doing tea infusions in their beers and um, they've done some things with like black limes and whatever. And so we were just thinking uh, something easy drinking for the summer, you know, quench some thirst. Yeah, it was great timing for the fest for the craft beer festival too, oh, like yeah. beer week yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah man, that was hot. Yeah, it's a great yeah. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, <laughs> seriously, because um, we got there and we tried the raspberry one or the raspberry tea one, which was like phenomenal. It was yeah. so good. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. Um, and that's the other thing too is um, the uh, little giant beer summit the other day. That was really you know yeah. fun time as you guys well. Were there? Uh, unfortunately, I, I went for a little bit. She was. I was out of town. Oh, I had okay. to be out of town for work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, but I made it down. My my wife and I. That was a good evening. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It, it's good to see all those like events and everything yeah. like that, and see people out there. You yeah, know? it's nice because you do see there were quite a few brewers there. You know, just talking, being available for the public. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Oh yeah, you forget that it's kind of like you know feels almost I don't know press conferency in right. a way, but yeah. it, but but like the best way possible, <laughs> no, right? It's, it's like it's you get that little mingle, yeah. you know. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And then the five one five collab looks like it's got bikes on it. Is that Ragbri? No, uh, no, actually, we uh, we literally, so Barb from five one five. I don't know if you guys know her. She's a definite character. She's real, real. Uh, she's out there. She, I've known her for many years. She's she's wonderful. Uh, she's a very loud uh, and boisterous <laughs> person. Just just a great great person. <laughs> It's awesome. Um, do you, I mean, you need those types of people if you're going to run a brewery, for you, sure. You do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she uh, She's awesome, but she bikes uh, 365 days a year. She's got a fat bike. She oh, bikes wow. in the middle of winter. Like, she's just hardcore. I don't. I think she got rid of her car. Like, she just doesn't. Oh. <laughs> she doesn't use four wheels. She only uses two. That's um, commitment. And, and, cardio right there. And, sure. and uh, Josh, uh, our production manager, who happens to be my best friend, um, uh, who's not here with us. I mean, he's uh, still alive. Okay. Not, I was, was going to say, I got nervous. No, no. <laughs> he's no longer with <laughs> he's us. not currently In here. this room. I'm sure we'll right. see him in the video portion <laughs> exactly. of everything. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, he, he and Barb kind of got together 
together a number of times and talked about a different, different a few different things and um, kind of settled on an idea of doing a bike ride with the event because we share a bike trail between Confluence and 515. Oh, cool. And so, the, I mean, the bike trails are linked. It's a pretty easy ride with a nice stop and waterworks for a beer. Um, and uh, they wanted to do like a Kolsch, but they, they wanted to play around with Tamarind um, uh, and Cardamom. Um, so that's just I don't know I don't know I don't know if it was Barb or Josh that came up with that. It was I, I missed out on those meetings. Yeah. You know, so they just told me what they were doing. I'm like, all right, whatever. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> sound right. But I think this one uh, was a leap of faith, faith for John. It was, <laughs> sure. You know, and we did. We actually got some tamarind pods and you know got a little of that going and put it in some Farmer John's and we're like, ah, oh, that, that's when I became a believer. You yeah. Know, this is going to be a good thing. So yeah. for sure. Um, but yeah. So there's actually on the can, there's a picture of us. That's like a little comic panel. It starts with us at the brewery, like cheersing. Oh, then, get out. And then in the middle, it's us riding. Well, it's, I think one of them that got the biker on the left, I think is supposed to be me, but it's way <laughs> too skinny. So there's no way. <laughs> this is great. But, but, this but, you in college, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe high school. Maybe high school. You're getting yeah. a lot of credit. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and then that's definitely Barb. Like, if you've ever seen Barb riding a bike that looks exactly like her. It's got a yeah. braid and everything. No. So, yeah. So, we, 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 we did the whole thing. We started off. She tapped the beer at the at the brewery. Uh, we went on a sweet bike ride. There's, there's a couple pictures up on social media. Very cool. Um, stopped for a cheers, and then we ended at, ended at 515, where Drew, one of our brewers, screwed on the tap handle and poured the first pint over there. Nice. It was a lot of fun. That's so fun. Yeah. I And I know we sort of talked about this a little bit before, but, like, the packaging and the stories that you guys tell on your cans of beer is so cool like i just i think it's really great that every different beer tells its own story and yeah, it's truly. nothing looks it doesn't look like anything else that's out there on the market really thank yeah thank you um we owe a lot to 818 mm -hmm. melissa carlson they, they sure. do great work with our stuff it's just um i always tell everybody they make us look cool yeah, we can make it appear, but we, you know the branding is everything, really, and naming and all that stuff. And so, yeah. um, there's so much that goes into it, and they are an instrumental part of it. Yeah, we're we're giant dorks, and they're making us look cool. <laughs> no, <laughs> yo, but listen, I mean, but it's so cool because you have those people that want to help out and want to make you guys even better than you sure. already are, and just doing things like that where you can, at least, said you recognize a Confluence beer probably anywhere you go, you know, in the city. It's that matte finish on the can, you know, what I mean, with the with the crazy designs on it, yeah. everything like that. It's recognizable. But yes, yeah. that's what she told me from day one was that people should look at your stuff and know it's you, and it should translate. So um, I think she's done a phenomenal job of, of doing that for oh, us. Yeah. 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 For even, sure. Even some stuff that we try to push the boundary on, like having a wizard on the like in like with the cosmos yeah. like <laughs> casting a watermelon spell or something crazy. <laughs> like you still look at it, and even though the, you know it doesn't look like the normal. You know, like it doesn't have that same combo. It still has that recognizable, you know, tying all the branding together. Exactly. She's, she's really good at reining us in when we're like, let's do this crazy thing. She's like, calm <laughs> down. Pause, pause. Let's try to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> good for on sure. you, though, for, for saying the matte finish. That, yo, <laughs> I'm a big matte finish guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it Excellent. looks sleek. I think it looks clean. You know, the gloss kind of looks a little tacky. So yeah, you're yeah. switching it up a little bit. Yeah. It's funny because I feel like I run everything, like my social media, like for Kiss and everything like that. I run everything through Elise. Like, oh, I'm not yeah. even gonna lie. She's like my filter, so I feel that. Yeah. Oh, man. No, absolutely. Uh, what's next for you guys? What do you think is the next big thing, obviously? Oh, boy. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, that's a huge question. Next year, two beers a week. Yeah. No, I'm just Ooh. kidding. Just <laughs> we're just running it out. <laughs> we were thinking about standing on our head and spitting nickels. Yeah, but, exactly. You know, yeah. Then we decided to do this instead. So. Yeah, no, for sure. sure. Well, I love that you guys are using the tap room more for local acts as well. I think that's oh, a nice yeah. expansion as well. Yeah. 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 Now, we've got, uh, I mean, there's always things brewing <laughs> yeah we're both dads it's okay it's dad jokes. Right <laughs> we'll get for dad jokes but yeah. uh, no there's there's quite a few things that we have uh, going on you know we do a little bit of the sour and wild and um, working more on these um, kettle sours we've got something another fruited version coming up here that we'll brew later this week and Love release that. in a month or so mm -hmm. um, the barrel aged we are uh you know, our building, we could expand our footprint potentially. Um, we've got that mm -hmm. opportunity. I'm not saying we will. You, you saying on campus or are you saying beyond? On campus. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Cool. Just, you, you're not trying to like do more, more than one tap room? No. no. We can't. Yeah. You know, as a native Iowa brewery, yeah. we're allowed one retail license. I didn't so. know that. Sure. Okay. So that's different. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. All right. So, yeah. The privileges we have are one retail license, the ability to, to distribute beer, our own and others. And, um, the brewery itself you know manufacturing so sure. 
we, we got plenty of space back there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know what sure. I mean? Yeah, do something. I mean, since the the whole um, the waterworks are trying to, or um, the, I don't even know what it is. They're trying to do this project on the rivers. I know they're trying to. Yeah. Do, yeah. I don't even know what you're trying to say. Uh, I, don't here. Know, I don't know either. Well, yeah, well, it's building a bridge, a, a pedestrian bridge. Well, yeah, exactly. Basically complete, I think. Yeah, just about. Yeah, and the um, um, they're going to do that like th- the water park essentially on the river. Yeah, um, so that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. You know, so you can do like this is bad. I haven't even drank a beer yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't know if that was a go or not, but I, I you think like Des Moines River, they're going to take out the dam and put all the I, that sounds like features they're gonna, in. Yeah. That, that'd be awesome. That'd be sick. I mean, I, sure. I don't know for sure, but I'm going to say definitively on this podcast that is what's happening. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have no idea. This, exactly. If you hear it, if you heard it here first. Yeah. It's happening. <laughs> Guarantee. We'll see uh, if I'm right. No, but that would be an awesome expansion yeah. of you know beyond the bike trails. You know, because yeah. obviously you have such active bikers. Mm-hmm. All you know, all throughout, and then it's just I love the bike community in general. They just like to ride bikes and get drunk. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's people, you know, like yeah. I'm not a biker myself, but like if I did, you know, and the I, drinking and I looked, part, what you got? Yeah, the drinking yeah. part. It's just the whole like looking good in like a tight, you know, jumpsuit thing. Sure. I don't oh, know. Yeah. That's maybe not. I don't for me. think many people do look good. Yeah, you know what? There's like, <laughs> unless they're like Jack. There's this one yeah. sales guy. Shout out to Mike. But like Mike is like the most like svelte human being ever he can rock that stuff down <laughs> downstairs so shout out to mike from my heart des moines but yeah. you know, other than that i don't know if there's many people that can rock that kind of stuff no. <laughs> no. we're working on uh, 12 ounce cans for a few different things okay so, i was gonna cool. say because you guys usually have pounders yeah. yeah yeah but uh we'd like to do some of the barrel aged and maybe even get farmer john's in a like yeah. a 12 pack, 15 pack, or something, 12 ounce cans. That's what I'm saying. That'd be great. Accessible. Case of Farmer John's, yeah. 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 And just a four pack. Yeah. A little 30 rack, yeah, yeah. like yeah. that. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, man. Should we be looking for you at any upcoming events? Anything that you've got you know, on the Always. docket? Yeah. But, Anywhere uh, there's beer. We should. <laughs> great. There. No. Um, Have beer, we'll travel. Yeah. yeah. The next. Well, the, Wells Fargo has the IV food wine and the, yeah beer food and wine expo that oh, they do sure. every year we'll be we'll be there john and i john and i'll actually be up there tap dancing on the stage one yeah. night i think it's friday night that it's going on i'll look we'll, for you guys we'll be there for yeah. that <laughs> yeah, we're up at anything wells fargo does anything up at the arena the basketball sure. coming up uh, hockey yeah they, they serve us upstairs at the the fort so it's pretty, yeah you can yeah. actually get our beer in the arena which only took uh, us it that's awesome cool. yeah, yeah it was four or five years and you guys get the uh, i was gonna say des moines ipa and the farmer john gets sold now right or oh, is yeah. it yeah uh, is they, i was gonna say those two and then they sell yeah they'll sell They'll have Oktoberfest and they'll have some rotating seasonals. It's usually at least four brands. That's awesome. Yeah, Yeah. no, it's good to see that the arena and like Spectacor is trying to get like craft breweries actually in the arena, which is nice, Mm -hmm. you know, because I know they also do uh, Top Link Alive out there too. So it's very nice to see see all those different rotators of the the craft beer scene here in Des Moines for sure. For sure. We wish the I Cubs well. I think they're post season now and doing well. And yeah, 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 it's a shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were um, were doing well. They um, they took it to five games, you know, so uh, against the Round Rock, but yeah. is that what the uh, over the Ivy was inspired by, or did you go with the? Are you a Chicago Cubs? It was fan? actually the Chicago Cubs. Yeah, okay, it was, it was their World Series yeah. championship. That was oh, cool. okay. well, yeah. Shout out to that. Yeah, very so. nice. That's are awesome. you a diehard Cubs fan or anything? Anybody uh, not like diehard? I, I, I feel like since we've opened the brewery, I don't have time to watch the Cubs anymore. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, it takes a lot of patience, man, for sure. Yeah, it's like I, like during like our busy season, I have to etch. It's, and this is like now, of course, during the winter, I have to etch out time to watch the Eagles. So yeah, just yeah. to make sure I can actually get it in, yeah. for sure. Oh man, too funny. Well, of course, Confluence, yo. Thanks for coming out, guys, for sure. Absolutely. Eric and John, it was, was awesome, for sure. So We're gonna much drink. fun. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to you know taste some stuff real quick. Of course, you can follow them on uh, Instagram at Confluence Brew. Uh, website-wise, it's confluencebrewing.com, right? That's correct. Yep. Yeah, 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 so yeah. easy to find y'all, for yeah, sure. Thank you so much for having us on. Dude, yeah, thanks awesome. for coming So much on. fun. Yeah. yeah, it was a great time, <laughs> for sure. a great time. All right, cheers. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's drink. <laughs>